The subject of this brief presentation on structural engineering is Analysis and Design for Stability, ACI 318. I'm Alan Adams, Chief Structural Engineer and Senior Product Manager at Bentley Systems. In ACI 318.14, the analysis requirements for concrete structures have been clarified and consolidated in Chapter 6. A particularly important requirement is given by Section 6.2.5, which indicates when slenderness effects can be ignored. What are these slenderness effects? What is the danger of improperly ignoring them? If slenderness must be considered, how can its effects be properly considered in the analysis and design of concrete structures? These effects related to the stability of the structure and failure to consider them can be catastrophic. To better understand these requirements, let's first cover some fundamentals of stability. In the analysis and design of a structure, there are three aspects that must be considered. Strength, stiffness, and stability. In this brief presentation, I'll be focusing on analysis requirements associated with structural stability. Large P-delta is the effect of vertical loads acting on the laterally displaced structure. In the initial state, the structure is subjected to horizontal and vertical loads. As the structure displaces horizontally, the vertical load acting on the displaced structure produces an additional moment in the structure. This moment results in additional displacement, which results in additional moment, and so forth, until the structure reaches equilibrium. In this simple example, the design moment is not merely V times H, but rather V times H plus P times delta total. If the structure is not stable, rather than converging on the final position, it will collapse. This condition is critical and is not detected by a traditional first order analysis. A second order analysis of some type must be performed. Small p delta is the effect of axial load on the deflected member. In the initial state, the structure is subjected to an axial load. As the member deflects, the axial load acting on the deflected member produces a moment in the member. This moment results in additional deflection, which results in additional moment, and so forth, until the member reaches equilibrium. In this simple example, the design force is not merely the axial load P, but includes a P delta moment. If the member is not stable, rather than converging on the final position, it will collapse. Again, this condition is critical and is not detected by a traditional first order analysis. Member out of straightness. The ACI 117 specification for tolerances for concrete construction and materials allows a variation in straightness of 0.3%. The axial loads acting on this curved member induce additional design forces into the member. Member imperfections. Small voids or variations in concrete strength or aggregate strength result in cross sections that are not perfectly uniform. Not only is the strength affected by these imperfections, but the stability of the member is also impaired. So these are four of the more common conditions addressed in ACI 318 that impact the stability of the structure. One more fundamental idea. The type of analysis to be performed is often referred to as a first order analysis or a second order analysis. The first order analysis does not consider the deflected shape or structural irregularity, while the second order analysis does. In the case of large P delta shown here, the first order analysis indicates that the, that the design force in the column is merely an axial force P with no moment. The second order analysis more correctly indicates that the design forces in the column are an axial force P and a design moment P delta. Referring again to section 6.2.5, ACI 318 uses the term slenderness effects when generally referring to stability effects. If these effects are not permitted to be neglected according to this section, what methods are available to consider them and how are they to be done? Here are examples of the more common approaches. Large P delta can be considered either through the application of moment magnifiers such as the delta S factor or a second order analysis. For sway frames, the large P delta moment magnification method is given in section 6.6.4.6. In this method, the sway moments, usually those from wind and seismic lateral forces, are magnified by a delta S factor. The definition of a sway frame versus a non-sway frame is given in section 6.6.4.3. In general, not always, but in general, moment frames are considered to be sway frames. Small p delta can be considered either through the application of moment magnifiers, such as the delta factor, or a second order analysis. For non-sway frames, the small p delta moment magnification method is given in section 6.6.4.5. .6 
In this method, all moments are magnified by a delta factor. In general, not always, but in general, braced frames and shear wall buildings are, consider are considered to be non-sway frames. Often, gravity moments in moment frame structures are also considered non-sway frames. It is interesting to note that sway frames are required to consider large P delta, but not small P delta, while non-sway frames are, are required to consider small P delta, but not large P delta. The geometric imperfection of out-of-straightness and the member imperfections can be considered through the use of effective lengths, KL. The nomographs used to obtain the k-factors have been calibrated to include the impact of these imperfections. Note that the k-factor is used in the determination of when the slenderness effects can be neglected. In this way, the severity of the structure and member imperfections impact the determination of when the other stability effects, large and small p-delta, can be neglected. The so-called crack factors are given in section 6.6.3.1.1. The commentary to that section indicates that the cracked factors are based in part on a phi sub k factor whose purpose, according to the commentary to 6.7.1.1, is to account for the variability in the actual member properties. Hence, one purpose of the cracked factors is to account for the member imperfections. These are critical considerations in the design of safe structures. They can be satisfied quickly and comprehensively using Bentley's RAM structural system. Let me demonstrate how that is done. In the RAM structural system modeler, even complicated buildings can be modeled quickly and accurately. Part of that modeling is to specify the cross sections, including the cracked factors. The analysis of the structure is performed in RAM frame. Initially, deselect the option to perform a large p-delta analysis. Perform the analysis of the structure for each of the load cases. Select the ASCE7 stability coefficient report. This will list the stability coefficient theta which is the same as the ACI 318 stability index Q when C, D, and IE are set to 1. Unlike theta, for Q the actual load factors are required, so ignore that message. Review the values of theta for each level for each load case. ACI 318 indicates that if Q is greater than 0.05, the structure is to be treated as a sway structure, which is the case here. Then select the option to perform the large p-delta analysis and perform the analysis. With the analysis complete, we can now proceed to RAM concrete for the concrete design. Select the desired code and specify that the structure is unbraced against sway as we found from the Q-stability index value. Perform the specialized gravity analysis that includes pattern loading of the live load. With the analysis complete, we can proceed to the concrete column design module, where we can select any column stack to be designed and viewed. In this case, the program selected 10 number 7 bars at the upper levels and 10 number 8 bars at the lowest level, with the bar pattern shown here. The design report of the column at any story can be viewed. Included is the value of KL over R. Since it's greater than 22, ACI requires that we account for the slenderness effects, which we did. As you can see, the RAM structural system provides a robust set of capabilities for satisfying the design and analysis of concrete structures per the requirements of ACI 318. ACI 318 has become more demanding and complicated in its requirements for stability analysis. The RAM structural system provides powerful and comprehensive tools that allow you to work efficiently and productively, producing structures that are safe and economical. For more information, contact us at www.bentley.com.